Hey everyone, today we're going to cover the difference between subdivision and low poly modeling and tips for making high to low detail. I will be using Maya for this demo, but the concepts and workflows discussed here can be applied to any 3D software. I will be covering how to prepare this high poly subdivision cyberpunk grenade over the next few videos. The first part is focused on understanding the difference between subd and low poly modeling. As always, a like, subscribe, and share is always appreciated as I continue to grow the content of this channel. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Maya, and as you can see here, we have this cyberpunk grenade that I modeled in a modeling time lapse. Uh, now, the main difference from that grenade and this one is that I did widen this kind of center area over here, so all these pieces here, and then I changed the or order of these uh, panels and divots here but I used the same exact workflow and only just modified it slightly. Now this is based off of the concept from Filippo Ubertino right here, which I've posted in my last video and I can put down in the description below. Now, as I said, that this is a subdivision model. Okay, so it was made with subdivision in mind. All right, so as you can see, if I select this grenade, this grenade alone is about is a little over 61,000 triangles. All right. Now, if I were to take this and either hit three on the keyboard, you can see that now I go into smooth preview mode and you can see that now I'm at 982,000 triangles, right? And if I go ahead and select everything again and press one on the keyboard to revert it back to normal mode, and then I can go ahead and give this a a smooth mesh modifier or a smooth mesh. So if I hold shift right click, I can go ahead and do smooth. And that goes, goes ahead and subdivides this model. All right. Now I typically subdivide about two divisions for almost all my models. So if I go ahead and hit two, you can see now that that is what is giving us this 982,000. So just under a million triangles, right? Now, if I were to take this model and try to use it in a game engine or anything like that, it's just not feasible, right? So having all of this density here in this subdivision model is, you know, it needs to be heavily optimized for, uh, for, for games, right? So if we take a look again, kind of at some samples here, we can kind of see that these most likely if they were using the cyberpunk uh, game, uh, weren't subdivided to two divisions uh, or are sitting at 1 million triangles, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and revert these divisions back down to zero. So now we're at the base uh, model here. Now you could be thinking, well, why not just take this grenade at 60,000 triangles and then use that for baking? You certainly could. Uh, what matters is your poly budget. If I know that this grenade you know, is sitting, uh, has to be maybe 10,000 or 15,000 triangles or even less, I have to do some heavy optimization to this. And that's what we'll be covering over the next few videos is how to take this grenade and subdivide it. Now, the important thing here is to understand some tips before we get into that. As I was preparing these videos, there was definitely kind of like a pre-intro to the differences between sub D modeling and low poly modeling that I wanted to to talk about here right so if I take this for example where you know I take this uh, top piece and I duplicate it and move this over and I want to start working with this one because this is a subdivision modeling it has all of these holding lines in here Right, so I would go through the process of essentially removing all of these uh, holding lines in here, removing bevels and everything, and really getting this poly uh, triangle count down to a much lower count, all right? Now we have to make sure we keep th some things in mind. We have to make sure that we keep in mind, you know, the overall form and the overall silhouette of this model meaning we can't go too low poly um, to sacrifice the, the detail and quality of this model, right? So, because if I, for example, were to just start going in and just start cutting and hacking away at some polygons um, and some edges like this, you can see by removing all of those, now the silhouette has completely changed for this model, right? So not only that, but we have to be careful about how Maya or how 3D software subdivides, right? So if we can see here, we can see that this is doing a pretty good job subdividing this arc here, kind of this semicircle, right? And I wanna be careful about not just straight up 
getting rid of some of these uh, details that I'm going to need for subdivision, right? And not only for subdivision, right, even for the slow poly, but if I were to take this and kind of remove some of that detail that I know that I'm going to need, or maybe I do kind of this main piece here, you can see that these are kind of crucial to the overall form here, right? And so these are the things that we're going to talk about uh, in, this, in these examples between low and uh, high poly or subdivision modeling. Okay, so I have these sets of models here that I want to take. I want you to take a look at, right? So here, in a nutshell, is our sub D or subdivision base models. So these models were made with holding lines in mind. These have you know bevels and you know um, all of these edges that are just going to help retain the form. So when I hit three, I know that I'm going for the cylindrical shape. Okay, you can see that I have kind of these differing uh, tr amounts of edges here that are all going to be creating kind of the same object here, which is just a cylindrical piece. Now, the reason I'm showing you this four sided cylinder is because this is what I see a lot of people do when they start out modeling is like, well, I just need a minimum four sides. And then if I subdivide, I get a nice nice circle or a nice cylindrical shape. I highly, highly recommend you don't ever use four-sided faces or polygons when it comes to uh, getting a sub-D circle, okay? At absolute minimum, I would recommend that you use six, okay? And then try to aim for eight, especially when you want something that is going to be uh, circular, okay? The reason why, now this isn't, you know, 100% applied all the time, but it's definitely a, a rule that you want to abide by. Okay, so now if you see the sub D smoothed, this is the subdivision. Okay, this is the, the smoothing of these models that were right here. Okay, so you can see that they all pretty much look like this nice cylindrical shape. shape. But the key thing here is that it's getting progressively more and more uh, there's more and more subdivisions, more and more edges. So for example, if I grab this cube here and, you know, I go ahead and bring this up, grab this cube and kind of scale it up here like so. And if you try to just smooth preview that, watch what happens, right? It just turns into this mush, right? So this is what subdivision means, right? So you're subdividing the mesh and it essentially is interpolating between these points. That's why when, if I go ahead and hold shift, right click and multi-cut, if I go ahead and add just control, middle mouse, um, left click here, now you can see it's starting to retain its form because now it's trying to essentially interpolate between these two edges and these two vertices, right? And I can continue to do that as, you know, to really hold these uh, edges here down at the bottom. So you can see what we can start to get, right? Now, the reason why you wanna avoid using four, even though it'll subdivide, is because when you wanna go through the process of baking this information, so now we're going through, now taking the low poly bake, baking this information from the sub D model into this low poly model. Take a look at this sub D base here. What essentially this low poly bake here is, over here, is the same model, but with all the holding lines removed, right? And if I go over here, you can kind of see all the holding lines here. And you can see it's kind of looks weird. The shading looks a little bit off. And that's because it's using a soften edge of 180 degrees. How do, you, how do you get that? If you go hold shift right click, you can go to soften and harden edge here. All right. And if I go to harden edge, you can see that that'll kind of reset the soften angle down to about zero degrees. Now, zero degrees of what? That's the degrees of these the neighboring faces between uh, with the edges in between. So meaning if I, you know, were to go ahead and kind of add this edge here, it's going to be based off of this face and this face here, the angle here. Now, 
I'm going to put these in the description below, but I highly recommend you take a look at some good, good references here, right? Elements has a really good video where he talks about uh, normals and vertex normals. There's an 80 level video, uh, excuse me, article on normal maps and how they work in the baking process based from uh, Carl's, uh, Carlos Lemos. Uh, you can check out it on his art station. He just does a fantastic job really uh really breaking this down right and then you can see it posted here on his art station so he kind of goes through that i'm not trying to do as in depth here because there are just really good uh, resources that already exist and then you can take a look at decoded who recently did a video probably a few months ago a couple months ago now uh back in march and he talks about you know how normals work in 3d software so definitely take a look at these three resources uh, and do some more research but that in a nutshell you know it is going to give you a really good understanding of how normals and smoothing works right so again like i can show you quickly a sphere and scale this up and maybe we set it to something like 16 so a little bit lower but then now if i take this and set this to harden edge now you can see this faceting right and then i can set this maybe to an angle of 35 and then we see how it smooths and it looks like it smooths it pretty much all, all the way around but if i were to reduce this here to an even lower value of eight subdivisions now you can see this angle of 35 isn't enough to smooth between these edges now it starts to do it towards the bottom here because the angle between these faces is uh, less than 35 degrees. If it's more than 35 degrees, it leaves it faceted. All right. Now, another nice thing you can do is take a look and at uh, some polygons, and then you can look at kind of face normals here, which lets you know the directions of normals. So that's also nice. So I'll go ahead and just uh, disable that with face normals. So you can do vertex normals, tangents, and all that stuff. Um, but again, take a look at the resources and references and that'll kind of give you a good understanding. Because now what I want to get into is understanding how to kind of bake this from this low poly uh, or take this high poly detail and bake it into the low poly. Now, if I've already gone ahead and done that. And if you see, I can go ahead and enable textured view and you can kind of see what's happening here. Now, Maya's viewport works okay. Um, but we're also going to take a look at this in Substance Painter uh, here where I have these already baked. But you can see here that if you just model this very low and you are relying on sub uh, the smooth preview for your form, it's going to cause a lot of pain later down the road, which is why I always recommend at least starting with these six to eight sided uh, cylinders, right? You can see that these look a little bit bigger, but take a look at, at least in Maya, there's these artifacts. Now you can rid, get rid of these artifacts here by going and adding uh, bevels to kind of help it uh, between these edges and these faces, right? Here, there's just no saving this one because it's just so, so low poly, right? And if you're relying on the smooth preview, you're like, oh yeah, that looks great but your original base mesh isn't uh, close to that form, that's where that's gonna cause a lot of issues, okay? And then if you take a look here, the differences between this bake and this bake is that I've gone through and I've beveled these edges, okay? And these bevels are gonna help with the smoothing and it's gonna help retain that form, it's gonna help retain the silhouette a lot better than just having it be kind of completely flat. Now, this all comes back to your poly budget. If you have something that you, you can afford to bevel, uh, at least the key details of your model, and you're aiming for maybe a 10,000 or 15,000 triangle or polygon object, then you should be able to get away with beveling. If you have something that needs to be incredibly, incredibly low poly, then you may not be able to afford beveling, all right? Now, if we go ahead and jump into Substance Painter, you're gonna see it look a little bit better. It handles the normals a bit better than the Maya viewport, okay? Now, this green here, these are the non-beveled versions. Now, we can go ahead and kind of take a look here. And if I hit the uh, Polygon Fill Tool Mode, you can at least see the uh, wireframe uh, and edges here, right? And you can see it's kind of very flat and it looks, you know, Okay, but there's a little bit of baking artifact here 
that's happening, okay? And then again, you can see here on this this cube, the four-sided cube just doesn't look good at all. Now, here are the beveled version, so we can maybe compare the six version to the eight version. You can start to see that the beveling is helping out a lot more, right? It's helping retain uh, that smoothing a lot better. And then as we get to the eight-sided ones, it looks really, really good. Now, this of course, is a low poly model is not meant to be zoomed in this close. But if I zoom out a little bit and keep this kind of in frame, you can see that it holds up pretty well versus, um, you know, just having it without any any baked detail. Right. So again, if we go back here and back to Maya, you can kind of take a look at the difference between um, these objects here. And then here's the sub D, but this you're starting to get into thousand triangles. And we say, okay, now I want to take that smoothing information and bake that into a texture map, uh, into a normal map. And that's where you can see that I've done that using Substance Painter. So that's what I mean by just baking that uh, in Substance Painter, where all of that high poly detail is being baked into a normal map. All right. So uh, I cover baking and uh, tutorials and how to set up your models in Substance Painter. So make sure to take a look at that uh, if you're curious as to how to do that. So this is a very introductory uh, look and overview on how the differences between low poly and sub D modeling. And this is going to help set us up for really getting into this over the next few videos and taking this, you know, 60 some odd thousand base model, or I would say I'm going to subdivide it a couple of times to about, you know, two subdivisions here, which is about a million triangles, right? So we're going to show how to take a million triangles worth of data here and information and then bring that down to uh, something a lot more reasonable, maybe 10 to 20,000 triangles. All right. So you can see we have about a million here. Now, remember, please make sure when you're modeling and doing subdivision model modeling is don't rely on the uh, smooth preview, right? So if you go over here and we take a look at this and you're starting to work on this form here and you're just starting to edge copy um, and whatnot and don't work like this. You're like, oh yeah, it looks nice and smooth. That looks great. I'm going to just continue to move on. It, you may want to because the, the effects and everything are cool. But when you do this, you start to rely on this. And so your form starts to suffer because of that. And you start to get blocky um, models like this. Look how blocky this looks. But you work in smooth preview and you think the form looks good. So you want to be careful of that. All right, so we're, you want to model by with sub D modeling and treat smooth preview and mesh smooth as kind of the final, like almost if I took this and shift right click and did a soften edge. If I did a soften edge on this, you can see this looks pretty good and it holds up the overall form, the silhouette and everything is there. That's how you want to treat mesh smooth. Okay, you want to treat mesh smooth the same way that it's just kind of adding the subdivisions and smoothing the uh, original model. Okay, so I can take this one, maybe duplicate this over and then do a soften edge on this one. And then we can see this one with the smooth uh, subdivisions and then take a look at that, right? They hold up pretty close and the main difference is that obviously this is much, much higher poly. we got a million here on the right and we have 60,000 on the left. And we're going to work even more to get this down to something much more re uh, manageable. And then we're going to take it into Substance Painter and then bake that high poly detail down into the low poly detail. All right. So I wanted to keep this uh, less than 20 minutes here, about 15, 20 minutes. And we can keep... Uh, this will help set us up over these next few videos. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below and then uh, we'll go from there. So I'm excited to start taking this model uh, through the entire low poly uh, pipeline and texture baking process. All right, so take care everyone and I'll see you around.